Today, I'm gonna cake a little fairy house. When I first started decorating cakes on my own, my source of knowledge was books. And one of my favorite cake decorators, I have like three or four of her books, is named Debbie Brown. This is the cake. Oh. Long time ago, I made this cake. 20 years later, I've decided to make a more how to cake it version of this cake. To make this cake, I baked three round chocolate cakes and a half sphere chocolate cake, but I didn't fill the sphere pan all the way to the top like I normally do, because I didn't want it to be a full dome. I just wanted it to be dome-esque. You know dome what I mean? Esque. dome -esque. I just cut the flat side a little so it would stay very flat when it was face down. I'm not gonna leave this sphere cake completely plain. I'm going to just create some indents. I don't know why I'm doing this, because it's gonna make it harder to ice. <laughs> so it looks like a green mushroom. By the way, the cake is near me right now, guys. So I keep yeah, he just me. keeps turning around and looking at the cake. And then I cut it into two layers. Look at you, Yolanda, with all your flowers. Do I look like a fairy? No. No. Okay. But this is kind of the most fairy-ish thing I own. Now I'm gonna simple syrup all of these cakes, and then I'm gonna color some Italian meringue buttercream. Speaking of color, how appropriate is this? Fairy tale. See what I did there? Now it's time to layer these cakes with my colorful buttercream. Speaking of buttercream, I have a Bake You Happy class coming up September 13th. It is my Buttercream 101 class. This is the most popular class. And in the class, I'm gonna teach you how to make not one, but two buttercreams. And then I'm gonna teach you how to flavor buttercream. So we're gonna make coffee, caramel, and lemon. Every purchase of this class is an entry into an epic giveaway, and the prize pack is valued at $539. So you're gonna get some fabulous products from Color Mill, as well as access to my cake decorating masterclass. We use a lot of buttercream. Sign up for the class. I mean, worst case scenario is you're gonna learn how to make all these delicious buttercreams, and best case scenario is you're gonna do all that plus win this amazing prize pack. Remember, even if you can't take the class live with me, like you live in another time zone, you will have access to the class forever. So you can make a fairy cake in 20 years from now, just like I did. So now I'm going to carve the base of this cake to look like the trunk. Would it be the trunk of a toadstool? It's not like a tree. I'm calling it the trunk. It's the house, really. I didn't want it to just be a straight cylinder with a straight dome. So what I did is I carved it on an angle, so I sort of rounded out one side and then rounded in one side. I was scared to carve it too much because the dome of cake is heavy and if I make it too thin at the mm. top, it'll be really volatile. I should have just had the fairies help me build it. Mm. Is that what they do? What do fairies do? They sprinkle stuff on you and then you start flying. I sprinkled stuff, I sprinkled sprinkles, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not flying. And now I'm gonna ice them both, just like I guessed. The roof was difficult to ice because of all the indents I made. I used my invention to sort of help dig out those indents, because a spatula is just straight, so it doesn't really help with any curves. So Wikipedia says they are demoted angels or demons. Those are little demons? Yeah. <laughs> I made mean, baby demon fairies. Yep. I don't feel bad about cutting into their house then. Now it's time to move on to fondant. I'm worried already because it's really, really humid in here. Nevertheless, I roll out some white fondant. I always make sure to measure the cake, draped it over the base of the cake, and then smoothed it all around. This was one of the oddest shapes. Like, remember when I covered Walter for the first time and I said he just looked like a chubby ghost? Yeah. It, it had that feeling. Now it's time to cover the roof, and for that, I dyed some fondant with the Color Mill Fuchsia. Rolling out the fuchsia, draping it on top, and it's really weird because most of my cakes, you know, hit the baseboard. This was like hanging off, so I trimmed it as best I could. At this point, I'm upset because I know I'll be able to see underneath the dome, so I've decided to cover underneath the dome with royal icing. I considered 
covering it with fondant, then flipping the cake over and covering it. But it is so hot and sticky in here that if there was fondant underneath and the weight of the cake, the fondant would have just stuck to whatever board it was on. I want it to look very like fairy tale and fairy core, like this cake is in a fairy land. So I've decided to put it on my cake stand that looks like a cut log. Yes. Right? But I need to cover the top. I want greenery. So I'm using a mold and I have two shades of green fondant. I'm pressing it into the mold, rolling over it, and it creates like these sort of like, it's not quite roses, but it's a very floral pattern. And I glued them to the top of my cake stand with some clear piping gel brushed on, or like a puzzle. I made sure to cover the entire cake stand. Obviously, I don't need a pattern under the cake, so I cover the whole surface. Looks very whimsical and fantastic. It is, yeah. it is. Fairy grass grows in rose patterns, if you didn't know. So now I take the base of the cake, place it on top, of my fabulous cake stand. And then I'm gonna add four dowels into the base to support the dome roof. And I've placed a small board that will be hidden on top of the cake. And I'm gonna place the roof on top and run a sharpened dowel through the whole thing. We gotta go back in time. I have more story time. Okay. So back in time, before I started the cake, I made the fairy heads, the fairy bodies, and I also made some very whimsical flowers. And for that, I colored gum paste. The bodies of the fairies are kind of like a long cone that I then shaped just to have some like softness and movement. The faces are just little balls of light peach gum paste. And then the flowers, these are something I used to make all the time, especially when I made tiered cakes. So what you do is you roll out your gum paste, you cut it into strips, they don't have to be even at all, and then you, I like to say scrumple, but you kind of like roll it up and scrumple it. <laughs> You'll see me doing it. So now I have an assortment of flowers, the fairy heads, the fairy bodies, and these I want to set aside to dry a little. And now I need to create the parts of this house. So I need a door, a door frame, a window frame, some shutters, and then just a little detail to put under the window. Fondant looked like I sprayed it with water. I'm thankful that this cake is not very geometric. It's whimsical. Yeah. So I can live with the window, you know, not being a perfect, perfect. square. But yeah. if this had been another cake, I wouldn't have been able to finish. And I'm also gonna cut various size circles for the top of the toadstool. And I cut out some leaves. You can see them. There, by the flowers. It's time to put all of this onto the cake. No, first I, I first, no, first I did that royal icing disaster. <laughs> this is Before. where the fa fairy tale ends. <laughs> we have reached the part of the fairy tale where it gets scary. I made some royal icing that was really stiff. I dyed it with a little bit of ivory and a little bit of black to get a bone color, okay? Or even like a really mushroomy color. And I decided I was gonna get down and pipe underneath. It was extremely hot in here, so the whole cake was sweaty. So the entire surface of the cake was sweaty and nothing would stick to it. So I just kept piping and using a, a paintbrush dipped in water, trying to like keep it in place. It never stopped running. So see how you see it on the house? That was not intentional. So once again, because the cake is whimsical, I could live with this, yeah. but in reality, I would never live with this. Yeah. It goes to show you how much climate affects cake decorating. I'm not happy, but I have to move on. I will be soon enough complaining about my winter cake problems, trust me. So as it turns out, I'm not happy with the top of the cake because of the royal icing disaster and the edges of my fondant. You can see royal icing. I have enough of the fondant, I'm gonna roll it back out and drape it and recover the roof. So the fairies are very safe in this house. Okay. It's a double roofed toadstool. <laughs> so because my base is white and all of my details are these beautiful vibrant colors, I can't miss. But again, because this cake is whimsical, it's a little more forgiving. Yeah. So I add the door, the doorknob, the door frame. So this is my favorite part and it's adding the whimsical flowers. So I just made some little like 
clusters of flowers on either side of the door and around the house, making sure to use all three flowers. I ended up adding green and baby blue dragées to the middle of the purple flowers as the center. It looks poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> the window, the shutters underneath. I add a little sort of sill on the window. I know, they're fairies. And of course, I have to add my dots, different size circles to the roof. And it's just in a random pattern, which always drives me crazy. You didn't scan a mushroom that you found? No, I didn't. And then I didn't. Did them accordingly? No, no. No, I didn't have a blueprint. Now it's time to add fairies and details to the fairies. I secured the heads to the body with a dry piece of spaghetti. I used to do this a lot when I made wedding cakes and they had like heavier detail. And it's great because it's edible. So even if somebody gets a piece of spaghetti, which slightly softens in a cake, it's absolutely edible. You don't have to worry about it. Now I need to add hair to the fairies. So I'm making little blonde redhead and brunette fairies. I just used a little simple leaf cutter and then I glued it to the top of the head and just curled it under a little. So they have these little like bobs. Aww. That's why they wouldn't let me in. I see. They're like, you are not a fairy. I don't know what that is. <laughs> And your revenge was to cut the cake around. Yes, the so I had to cut their I house see. down. Okay, so here's where it got tricky. I wanted to use spaghetti to also attach the fairies to the cake, but everything got so sweaty and wet on the outside, I was worried, so I ended up using toothpicks, mm. which I don't like doing, but only we are eating it. Yeah. And then I can add the wings, which I cut out of rice paper. And I just wanna, with a little bit of piping gel, you really don't wanna saturate rice paper because it will get soggy and limp and I want the wings to be very, very fairy. And then it's time to add arms. Finger is too big to attach them. I might hurt the wing, I might like poke the fairy. Don't poke a fairy, trust me. Um, so I used a dry paint brush to just sort of tap those arms on. They're very light, but I want to make sure they're secure. And so I used the brush to press the arm onto the fairy. Guys, remember I have a class coming up on the 13th of September and you can win big just by purchasing the class. Believe me, if you make cakes, you want to try these colors and you want to make buttercream with me. These fairies gave me a really hard time. They're not as nice as everyone seems to think they are. So I'm gonna go cut their house down. Don't leave a comment, no fairies were hurt. Can you put, <laughs> can you put a disclaimer? No real fairies were hurt. When you're cutting, I'm gonna put back the Lizzie's screams. <laughs> no! She's mm. eating our house, <laughs> mommy do something. Perfect time. Well, that's <laughs> there are baby fairies. Did you see them? <laughs> Look. Look. Yeah, you know, why is I'm so mad at my royal icing? Please don't leave like mean comments. They're not real fairies. You just watch me make them.